Hello. <laughs> um, just before the screening began, the, um, the US publicist uh, for the film said that all of you involved with the film are amazed that it's in the New York Film Festival. Why is that? Well, because it's uh, broad covered it. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, although it has, you know, it's got its moments of edginess, I mean, it, it, that's, that's what it is really, it's a, it's a broad comedy. Um, and uh, I was just quite shocked that they wanted it, <laughs> to be honest. Well, um, we love broad comedies. Why would we want to have that be a part of the celebration of cinema? Well, the New York I, mean, I, I suppose in, in, one, in one regard, I mean, uh, um, Partridge in, in, in Britain is very well known, very popular. Uh, in the US, he's not well known, but he's sort of, he's sort of an underground thing, really. There's uh, certain creative people in the US really like Partridge, but it's very much kind of underground, so it's got more of a kind of an edgy, culty thing, I guess. There have been rumours that um, about an Alan Partridge film going back at least 10 years. What took you so long? Um, well, you know, you go off and do other things, and then you 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 sort of you, you try different things and you work on different projects and and also when you work quite intensely with the character we have I mean the character's been around for like 22 uh, years uh, 21 years and um, but we haven't saturated the audience with, with the character you know we only did uh, 18 episodes on television um, we did some webisodes and the old special we've done for Sky in the UK but basically um, we, we, uh, we sort of do something with the character, then we walk away and then we come back. And it felt to, uh, to us that, you know, it, when you've been away from the character for so long, um, you start to miss him. I mean, he's, uh, for me, I've got a bit, because he's, he's sort of my bête noire, really, Alan, and um, he's like a sort of a, an annoying relative, really, uh, that you sort of, you, you quite like to see him at holidays, but... Uh, you don't want to live with him, um, and uh, I, I sort of. But when you you write for the character, it becomes very intense, and because it's like being in a room with Alan Partridge for like several months, which is actually really quite annoying. And so you have to uh, walk away. But then after a while, I sort of start to miss him. We, uh, we 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 talked about doing a film for a long time. Of course, the character is so successful that the pressure is intense and a lot of people in the UK were expecting it to, uh, to uh, not be very good and um, all, all the uh, reviews and the reaction in the UK has been fantastic. Um, um, you know, all, all the reviews have, have been pretty much universally uh, sort of uh, praiseworthy. Um, but certainly, the, the other thing that in our favour is the expectation is quite low, because um, they people were really, a lot of people were saying they shouldn't do this, they shouldn't make this film. So, so you know, it, it, it's it's a it was a tough tough thing to do. So we had to make sure we, we got it right before we did it. Were there over the years um, different ideas for what the the movie version, what the movie storyline would be? Did you sort of consider a bunch of ideas and discard them? Yeah, we did. We we talk, you know, we talk. You, you talk through different ideas over the years, you know, before you actually sit down and write the thing. Um, and uh, we had other ideas. One was that Al Qaeda took over the BBC. Yeah. Um, but uh, and uh, Alan was, you know, going to placate them and try to talk some reason with them. Um, and you have lots of funny lines that you think of, like you know. I think one, one line we had when, when we were thinking of that idea was um, Alan talking to Al Qaeda and they were saying, uh, you want to destroy the West. Um, as far as I'm aware, he said, the West doesn't want to be destroyed. Surely there's a midway between those two things. <laughs> um, um, but uh, uh, the thing is, uh, when, when you deal with um, something like that, you know, it only takes some sort of outrage to happen and suddenly it's profoundly unfunny, so we uh, decided to sort of avoid that. And uh, and also, we, we, we didn't... The problem with making a film is, you know, of a, a, a TV character is that by his nature he's myopic. So, of course, what you have to do is 
try and make it in some way cinematic, but uh, at the same time not lose that small world quality. So you're trying to square a circle. Um, if you make it too outlandish, then of course it, it, it becomes, you, know, you lose the, the essence of the character. And if you make it too small and, and parochial, then it won't, be, it won't justify itself as a film. So that was always the problem. One of our reference points was Dog Day Afternoon, um, because that film uh, has this ex uh, 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 sort of there's a big siege in it, and uh, it's an extraordinary event. But it's actually quite localized, and in the scheme of things, not a huge story. Um, but for the people in that area, in Dog Day Afternoon, it, it is a big event. Um, so we, uh, we, you know, we. we that, that, that was a reference point, and I think that the other reference point was Ace in the Hole uh, uh, with, with um, Kurt Douglas, because uh, what the, the essence we took from that uh, was that Kurt Douglas is, is a photographer and there's a guy trapped down a well in that film, and he's trying to spin the uh, story and try and keep the guy trapped in the well because he wants to uh, you know, capitalise it and make himself a famous journalist. Um, so we sort of use that in the partridge things like to, to put the way he tries to capitalise on, on, on the events. As you said, you've lived with the character of Alan Partridge for like 22 years and um, perhaps at times he seemed like an albatross around your neck, but um, it would make sense to not immediately do an Alan Partridge film, but try to get your film career going and then return to Alan Partridge when you feel you're, everything's up and running. But um, it seems to me that, that Although, uh, by definition, these kinds of comic characters don't really change or evolve, there has been an evolution in Alan Parker, and certainly within uh, Alan Parker, Alan Partridge. And um, within this film, I think we see some new colours, let's say, in, well, you, in you his have character. To, you, you have to develop the character slightly for, for, for film, because uh, you know, a, a sitcom character is slightly um, caricatured. Um, because we were doing on the big screen, we had to make him more nuanced and slightly smaller. Although he is, of course, a comic character and larger than life, he's actually slightly more subtle than he was on television. Um, and that's deliberate. Um, and, and it's slightly more nuanced. And there's a little more empathy. Uh, whereas on the early television stuff, he's just a fool that you laugh at. Um, but when we translated him to the big screen, we had to make sure that he had this sort of... Uh, he, he, was a, he was a more rounded character. I mean, there were a couple of moments, and they're both kind of close-ups of the hell for quite a while on, on you, on Alan Partridge, um, where you get a sense of an inner life. You get a sense of somebody having a realisation. Um, I, I think the, the second one is when he decides he's not going to sell out, that he, is, that, he, that, that, that he does have some core... Uh, set of values, and I thought that was a very interesting thing to kind of <coughs> superimpose on Alan, uh, Alan Partridge or, or introduce to, to the character, but it doesn't, it, it, it didn't sort of throw the character off. It, you no, integrated no, you, you it have to have well. a redemptive moment, but you don't want to, but that's why at the end we show that he's still an asshole, you know. Um, <laughs> you have to sort of come back and remind people that he's still a dis dysfunctional narcissist, but you know. He's got, you know, he's got some redemptive qualities, and uh, you know, he makes the right decision <coughs> at the right time. Um, but really, you, you can't have him changing uh, drastically. I mean, the thing is, uh, what, what we did was, whenever there's a problem like that, we, 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 you know, at the end of a film, the character's supposed to learn something and become enlightened. Um, and uh, what we do is just have Alan say, "I think that's I think I think he says in, in the uh, radio station. I think he says." Um, I think I've really changed, you know. Um, and you know when someone says that, they haven't. You know. So uh, that's how we, you know, we, we sort of dealt with that. Although the ending does suggest that there's been some growth because he's happy.